Blades to be knives, machining and welding. Let's get after it. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be shop. Not really a project today, just a quick video cutting some keyways. So we'll kind of cover a little bit of the basics of cutting keyways. More importantly, I had somebody ask about the rigidity of this round column manual mill that I have and how big a slots you could cut in steel. Thought we'd cut some keyways in here and demo for that person what kind of rigidity it has. Cutting slots, keyways are probably some of the most common slots that you'll cut. So we're gonna start with a quarter inch key, see if we can cut that full depth. We'll move up to a 3 8 keyway, see if we can cut that full depth, and then we'll try a half inch keyway and see if we can cut that full depth or if we've got to do it in a couple of cuts. So that's pretty much the plan. Should be super quick video, just going to knock out some keyways. We'll talk a little bit about how to center them, you know, how you can set it up some different ways if you've got long shafts, different things. So just cover some of the basics and then we'll just knock out cutting a few slots. Hey, if you're new to the channel, encourage you to get out there and check out the other videos. Lots of videos on machining, welding, knife making, just really the process of everything you're going to do in your machine shop. So I try to put longer, more detail out there to give you everything you need if you're working on projects in your own shop. You can see I've got a shaft set up in here. We're just going to turn it and cut keyways around the outside of this. Uh, it's got a couple steps on it, but we'll focus on this main step up here. Let's go ahead and jump right into it and get after making some chips. All right, so I'm gonna use a gar four flute carbide end mill is what I've got in here. So I've got gar end mills for all three sizes that we're gonna try. They're all four flute, they're all carbide. So that's what we're gonna to use to cut them. For longer shafts, you can actually, a lot of times you can use the slots on your table if you don't have a power feed or anything in the way. So if you've got a really long shaft and you wanna keep it centered up, just clamping it straight down onto the table, using one of those slots is a great way to line that up, keep it parallel. Right now, I've got this vise trammed in, so we're just gonna hold our workpiece in the vise, cut about a one inch keyway. For centering, you can either get the edge of your vise with a edge finding tool or something like that, and then you can work over half the distance of the material to find the center for your keyway. Most often with keyways, you're just gonna go down and you're gonna touch, you're gonna take that first little cut, and then you just eyeball center up on that flat that you just created, and you creep down a little bit until you get to where you're just cutting your flat area, and you can kind of hit your fingernail test and make sure that you are centered up, you didn't go too deep on one side. So you can get very, very centered up for cutting keyways that way. And then once you've cut that flat where you just have a little nick, then that's what you're going to use to set your depth, which for a keyway is going to be half the diameter. So for this quarter inch end mill, we're going to be cutting one eighth of an inch deep for the full depth of our keyway. So let me go ahead and get down on here. You'll see me work and get that flat spot, make sure that we're centered up, and then I'll set that depth at one eighth of an inch and we'll feed it. I've got it started at about three inches per minute right now. We'll see if we can turn that feed up or how that's going to go. That's the plan. Let's get in here and get this set up. All right, also let's talk about material real quick. This is a piece of 4140, so pretty decent alloy steel is what I've got in here. And for speeds and feeds, I use the Machinist Pro calculator. You can look up cncdirt.com to find it. Pretty cheap app. I found that it works pretty well. I can run up to my max 2000 RPM in this mill with this quarter inch diameter. I've got it set right now for 1600 RPM. So we're gonna be turning 1600 RPM for this quarter inch and I'll keep you updated on the speeds RPM we're gonna use as we move up to the larger diameter. Let's get this going. <laughs> All right, so I got that first little flat cut and move that over just a little bit to center up on there. All right, and I've got a little nick. I can feel this little bit of an edge on this side. So I'm gonna feed it back that way, just a little to center up there. And now no more lip. Go down a couple more thou, we'll see if we're at depth. All right, so I went down three. I'm definitely just a little bit below. So we'll say I'm about a, a thou or so into my cut. So I'm gonna push it down 124 more thou to get my depth and we'll cut this keyway. All right, so we've got our depth set. We're in there an eighth of an inch. Let's see how this does cutting a quarter inch keyway, full depth.
right, that was full depth. That was a full three inches per minute. I would say probably wouldn't want to push it any faster than that, but I think that cut pretty well. Sounded pretty good. Just a little bit of rattle going on, but not bad at all. All right, let's spin the shaft a little bit and we'll go ahead and set up for our 3 8 keyway. So far, cutting well. Yeah, get a nice close up. Keyway looks good in there for that quarter inch. A little burr along the edge, run a deburring tool down that and you'd have that all cleaned up. All right, let's spin her and get her going. Couple other things of note, you're trying to keep your rigidity as maximized as possible. So you'll notice that this is the quill all the way up and that's all the depth I have. So I've got the head of this mill lowered pretty much as far as I can to make sure I've got just some operating room. Again, you're trying to minimize how far that quill is sticking out. You just want everything as rigid as possible. We should be fairly well centered up already this time. So we're just gonna touch off and check depth, but let's see what RPM we wanna run for a 3 8 diameter cutter. All right, we could still run a maximum of 2000 RPM for this carbide. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at the 1600 where I have it. We'll probably slow that feed down just a little, but we'll see what it feels like here at three inches per minute. Says I can, you know, obviously if you're running a high rigidity machine, you can run up to 15 inches per minute. I don't think this one's gonna handle that. We'll see how it does at three and I may slow it down. All right, just went through the same process there with this 3 8 cutter. So I've just worked my way down to where it's flat. Got just a little lip here on both sides. So again, we're set up for a 3 8 cutter. We're going 187.5 thou is the half of 3 8. So that's the depth we're gonna cut. So we're cutting 187.5. Let me go ahead and get that depth set and we'll get this thing cut. Almost didn't come. All right, hopefully it didn't chip my cutter. I actually didn't realize I was gonna go all the way to the depth of this next step. So just touch that as I was feeding down, but I think it's gonna cut fine. All right, so we're basically cutting every, all that you're seeing on that step. That's really the depth that we're gonna go here. Let's see how it does at three inches per minute. And I may need to slow that down just a little. I think I'm gonna start a little slower and we'll speed it up. There's All right, there's one inch per minute. So I started at one inch per minute, went up to two and I finished it at three and it still seemed to cut very nicely in there, even all the way up at three inches per minute. Cut a beautiful keyway for three eighths. All right, there is our quarter inch keyway. That three eighths keyway finish is actually a little better on that three eighths one. And I didn't run it backwards. I didn't pull it back. Out of there this time, I stopped, but again, full 3 8 keyway, full depth, cutting that slot in there, no problem. All right, let's spin it a little more and let's get our half inch end mill in here and let's see how a half inch end mill will do. All right, you'll notice this half inch end mill is nice and stubby, just helps with that rigidity in there, starting out with that nice and short. Obviously the longer your end mill, the longer everything is, the more flex you're gonna have. 
Let's check our RPM and using that Machinist Pro calculator, let's change that diameter to 0.5. And we could still run all the way up to 2000 RPM, 20 inches per minute with that half inch end mill. So let's go ahead and see how it does at this 1600 RPM. And you can run a lot faster with carbide if you're using high speed steel. Obviously adjust your speed accordingly for that. kind of look, I can see that from the width of my end mill, I still have a fair bit to go down. Yeah, not quite there yet. Not quite. Oh, just about. Okay, there we got just below. So now, let me make sure I'm all the way off my step because we're gonna clearly be below that for depth. We're doing half of the diameter, so we're gonna do a full quarter inch depth on this one. All right, I'm gonna do the same as last time. I'll start out at about one inch per minute and I'll slowly speed it up and we'll see if we can get all the way up to three inches per minute or where it's, uh, it's kind of happy in here cutting this half inch diameter, quarter inch deep slot. the depth, about one inch per minute. There's two inches per minute there. So It seemed to like two just fine. I think the three inches was getting a little heavy. I don't know that I would sustain that for a long period of time. But bottom line is, if I were to have guessed, I did not think I was even gonna be able to cut a half inch keyway at full depth in one shot. I'm pretty excited. It did better than I even thought it was going to. I thought maybe we would have to do a couple cuts on the half inch. <laughs> Well, there you go. There's a full half inch keyway cut in 4140 alloy steel on this round column mill. Performs pretty decent. I'll go ahead and get a little close up on that with my other camera and then we'll wrap this up. All right, here's just a quick close up how we did on that cutting on there. So there's that half inch. We did cut that at full depth in there with that carbide, no problem. Got up to three inches per minute there at the back, but I think it did better at the two inches per minute. There's that 3 8 keyway cut in there, and there's that quarter inch. So anyway, if you're trying to cut slots in steel, that's not bad rigidity out of this little round column mill. I think it works pretty good. It's definitely served me well for several years. I've got a little CNC machine that I also use, but tell you what, for a drill press mill all in one, this round column has served me pretty well. I've got a full video out there if you wanna see a lot more details on it. Uh, obviously there are some pros and cons to a round column mill versus some other options, but from a cost perspective, affordability and capability, it doesn't do bad at all. All right. Well, YouTube, there's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop. Hope you enjoyed it. We got in here on this round column mill, did a little bit of slot cutting, talked through a little bit of the, the basics of cutting keyways, if that's what you need to do in some shafts, or essentially same principles apply if you're just trying to cut slots in any type of steel, or even if you're just trying to step over in steel and want to get some idea of what the rigidity is on this jet round column mill drill. So hope you enjoyed that. 
Again, if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, check out the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, just general principles of how to work in a machine shop. I think you'll enjoy them. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, doesn't cost anything to subscribe, drop a like, help other people find these videos in the future. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop, working on that next project, working on that next video for y'all. Y'all take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.